morning. Um, on behalf of the McClary family, I'd just like to thank you all for coming out to honor the life of a woman after God's own heart, Mandy McClary. It's been my pleasure since the beginning of 2018 to serve as the McCleary uh, family's pastor, um, and they have been a huge blessing to me, um, Jay, Kirsten, Dorian, uh, the rest of the family, and, and certainly uh, Mandy as well, and it's been my honor and privilege. Mandy was an incredible person. Uh, what, what sticks out to me about Mandy is her incredible peace and her incredible patience that she displayed on a daily basis. Uh, you you kind of have to have that peace and patience in order to watch all of the kids uh, that she watched and just all of those uh, young lives that, that she touched on a daily basis. Another thing that sticks out to me about Mandy is the great love that she had for her family, the great love that she had for her husband, great love that she had for her kids, her parents, her sister, her grandkids, and so forth. She, she had a phenomenal love for her family and for her friends as well. And she also had phenomenal love for her Heavenly Father as well, and her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I thank God that, that she did have that love, that compassion, that hope, um, and, and her Heavenly Father and her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And accompanied with that love and that relationship with her Heavenly Father, she had a hope in the coming kingdom, a, a hope that we can read about in Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21, uh, verses 3 and 4, talking about the hope that Mandy held so dearly, reads, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. And that's a hope that Mandy held dearly throughout her life. And again, I praise God, I thank God, that she did have that relationship with her Lord and Savior, that she did have that hope uh, in, in the coming kingdom where everything wrong with this world will indeed be made right, including death, the, the enemy of death itself. And so I know that Mandy would want all of us to be better servants of the Lord, to ensure that each and every one of us can be reunited with her at the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I encourage you all, with, with the tragic passing of Mandy here. I'd encourage you all to let this serve as a reminder to let the important things in life be important. But time with your family, time with your friends, cherish those moments, value those moments, let those moments be important to you. And on top of that, let your time with our Heavenly Father, cherish that time, make that time important because the, the fact of this matter is we, we don't know when our end will come. So make the important things in your life important. Let's go ahead and open up the service with the word of prayer. Father God, I just thank you for the beautiful life of Mandy. I thank you for her example that she has set before each and every one of us here this morning, Father. Father, at this time, I just pray that you surround the McCleary family with your love, with your care, with your support, with your peace. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together, to gather, and to just honor the life of a woman whose goal was to please you, whose goal was to love her family, to love her friends, and to love you and your son, Jesus. Father, we love you. I pray that we can learn from a brilliant example. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
I'm going to be making a few remarks about Mandy and what I knew of her, and we will give you time to say a few things if you'd like to as well, and Jay then will close this segment. Uh, if you have something to say, you're welcome to come up here and use the microphone, or I'll bring the microphone down to you. But if you do, take, take your mask off, because it's almost impossible to hear you take it off for a little bit without contaminating the whole group of people here, can't you? But anyway, do that, we can hear you, because I'm sure you have some things that are worth saying. Uh, I've known the McCleary family for quite a few years, about, just about ever since they were married. And uh, I didn't know them too well until they, we formed a small group. Uh, some, I, I don't know how many years ago we, we talked about, I mean, no one ever knows how long, but maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of, say, 15 years. Now, our pastor, Seth, whom we will hear later, wanted to have small groups in this church, so we formed some small groups, and I don't, I, I can't remember how they were even formed this long ago, but anyway, uh, Mandy and Jay, Jay land, landed in our group, and I, I was a little bit surprised because our group was all people like me, without much hair, or what they had was gray. And uh, I said to Mandy, I said, wouldn't you guys be better served or be more happy if you were with a, a younger group? And she said, no, we, we want to be with your group, guys. And so, okay. Uh, and we, so we started meeting, and as I said, we don't know, maybe 15 years ago. And the small groups were supposed to last for one year. And at the end of the one year, I announced, well, we'll be breaking up because we want to form new small groups to break new people in. And I about had a riot on my hand. They would not hear about it. No one in the small group would even begin to think about breaking up. So I said, well, we'll go on for another year or so. <laughs> well, we went on for about five more years, and I suggested the same thing again. I said, well, you know, we, we've been meeting, meeting together for a long time now. Let's, let's break it up and get some new blood in here. Nope, nope, they didn't, would not want to. We enjoy each other. We have fun together. We laugh together. We pray together. We eat together. And we just like to be together. So, uh, so anyway, uh, that's how I really got to know Mandy and Jay. Uh, we met for about two hours every week. And after the kids got a little bit bigger, I would go to some of our games. And uh, Kyle mentioned the fact that he enjoyed the uh, demeanor of uh, Mandy and I did too. Now, Jay informed me last night that he has her to get angry and scream that whole time. I never did. I, I never did. I went to all those ball games. I heard Marilyn scream. Jay screamed at the end to kill the umpire. I never heard a man sitting back there just drinking her cool and cool and cute. And I never could figure out how she could keep her cool so well. I called her house a couple of times for, I can't remember why now, maybe to tell her something about the meeting. And I would say, uh, Mandy, how many kids are keeping today? She said, oh, about 10 or 12. And I said, you got any help? She said, no. And now remember, these are all preschool kids. They all need diapers changed. They all need fed. They all need taken care of. And she was doing it by herself. I said, well, I'm sorry I call you when, you, when you're so busy like that. She said, oh, no, no don't worry about it. I'm not, I'm not busy. I, I don't know how she did. I, I really don't know. I, I just admire her so much for the demeanor. And I also admire her because I never heard her ever downgrade anyone or talk bad about anyone. I never did. I, I, I just wish people would have her attitude. She was always had a smiling person. And last couple of years, she didn't feel good. I know she didn't. But she still had that pleasant personality about her. Um, You know, uh, yeah, one thing I really regret about Mandy, I, uh, about her passing, uh, when her and Jay moved into a new home down here on Willow Road, uh, you know, and I went and visited them, and she was so proud of the fact she took us around, showed us the house, and, and she took us out to the, the back porch. It was all enclosed in a real nice open area, a real pretty back porch, and she says, this is where our small group can meet. And, and we never got to do that. But Jay said we could still do that. We'll honor Mandy by still meeting in, the, in that back room. Um, the small group has come and gone. We've lost a lot of people. But I think the thing we enjoyed about it is that we would meet together and eat. We would just talk to one another, share with one another. 
Amanda used to chuckle a lot. She said more than one time, she says, you know, this small group helped me raise my kids. And uh, she would, she would, if she had a problem in her heart or some of them had a health problem, she would come and we would ask for prayer. And she would always ask for prayer while some of her family were having some problems. And, and we prayed for her children. So they should have turned out okay. We think they did. Uh, but we, we shared, and that's, I think that's what brought us all close together. We shared our, our sorrows, our aches, our pains, and our regrets, and our happiness, and our victories. And that's what I remember about Mandy, that uh, I still think she's one of the calmest people I've ever met. No matter what Jay says, I think she was still calm and collected the person. Anyone else want to share now with, with uh, share, share what she has to say or let something about her? We'd like to hear from you if you would. And uh, I'm sure it has a lot of pleasant memories. Anyone? Feel free. Don't, don't be afraid of the microphone. Just stand up where you are. Okay, Anita back there. She, uh, I think when I first started coming to this church, the family that I fell in love with, and I fell in love with everyone, but was Mandy and Jay and their kids. And over the years, I've thought about it, and I thought, I think that she showed all of us her determination, her love, her kindness, and it was everyone. She just didn't pick out individuals. She shared it with everyone. She left a beautiful, beautiful legacy. And I love her. I love the family. And she showed us how to love God, too. Thank you, Maria. Anyone else? Anita, by the way, was part of our small group, too. I promised myself I would come up here and not cry, but obviously that's not going to happen. I just want to start off by thanking everyone for coming. It truly means a lot to me and my family. For those of you who knew me and my mom, we were inseparable. She was my best friend. And I literally mean that. When she got put on the ventilator, I quickly realized how much of a uh, I quickly realized how much of a role she played in that position. Um, for example, when I was in the hospital and in the NICU with Miles, I had a favorite nurse. I wanted to text her or call her just to tell her about my favorite nurse. And I wasn't able to do that. Or I would want to text her about the shower and how it took so long to warm up. And when it did warm up, it would only stay warm for about five minutes. And the water pressure was horrible as well, so I could barely get all the soap out of my hair. I want to ask everyone to do me a favor right now. If you have your parent beside you, take out your phone and take a selfie. Please. If they are not here, please text them and tell them that you love them. She really didn't want to take any pictures. She was so insecure. I don't even think I could tell you guys the last time I took a selfie with my mom. So if you guys did take those selfies or if you texted your parents, make sure you do take that selfie when you guys get home. And just hold on to those memories as you take them because you never know when the last one you take is going to be. Thank you. Would anyone else like to say a word about Mandy or about her mother or grand well, it couldn't be your grandmother, I don't think Bailey says much. But <laughs> anyone uh, like to say another word about Mandy? Okay, Jay, are you ready now? Yeah.
you know, I, I typed this down and wrote it out and uh, I'm going to run off, off script for the, for, for the first part. But I do have backup just in case I, I can't get through this on there. Obviously, you guys know who I am. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting my family in our time of need. A uh, couple, listening to Kyle's sermons the last couple weeks, just the first week was um, about 1% to grow closer to God. If you do 1% a day for the year, you're going to go grow closer, that closer to God throughout the year. Just so happened to be that about that time, I received this book in the mail. It's just one, one scripture a day and a, a testimony from people uh, that, that wrote this book um, on, on their different scriptures. Um, I, I want to read a couple on important dates uh, that just recently happened this year. Obviously, the most important date of my life is will be January 14th, the day of Mandy's passing. Uh, it just says perspective and problem. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I, I, I read these daily and all the hustle and bustle that morning. I didn't get to read that one until the next day. As I was reading that one and I flipped on to January 15th, it just hit the, hit, hit the moment in time in there today. Um, it says, the Spirit's doing, for I, am, for I am the Lord your God who takes your hand, your, takes your right hand, and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah 41, 13. I got one more, and that's just today's, today's date. Um, January 20th, uh, it, it, the question at the top says, how are you? John 11:35. Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible. I um, have a few stories I'd like to share. I'm going to try to get everybody to laugh, but you know me, I'm, I'm always up front and Kind of gets to the point of my, my uh, first part of my story here. Um, when Mandy and I met many years ago, 28 years ago, wow, uh, many, many years ago through a, through a mutual friend, never did I imagine I would be standing here today and, and to do what I, what I did. Um, but, you know, back, back when I first met Mandy, and Mandy brought me around her family, Marilyn, Mark, Neither of them liked me. <laughs> Maybe it's just how bold I am. Maybe it's just how I don't care whether you like me attitude that I have. But, you know, um, over the 28 years that I've been around the family now, they've, they've come to love and, and know the person that I am. This may look like a big, ugly, fat guy that just don't care. And... Deep down inside, I think everyone in this room knows my heart, knows the passion that I, I do everything with. And um, I, I regretfully now did not, and, and the fact of trying to show Mandy that I loved her, she knew that we both fell head over heels for each other way back when, 28 years ago. Um, how I want to do this. Um, I need to uh, tell another story. And this time I'm going to call two special people up on stage with me. Those two spe special people are Lacey and Lindsay. If you could please come up here with me just for a brief moment. As they're walking up here, way back when, when Mandy and I started dating, we kind of split up for a couple months, didn't talk. Mandy loved Lacey and Lindsay. Was, she treated them as her cousins as they are. And as they, uh, I was working Howard's Main Street as security guard just to make sure people didn't loiter, 
point to read on the parking lot to keep back in the day when everybody cruised Main Street. How many people remember those days? <laughs> the CBH, yeah, I, I think so. Um, but Mandy was taking Lindsay and Lacey home one Friday or Saturday evening that I was up there. They, they talked Mandy into stopping. Hey, let's go see Jay. And to that, ladies, you two gave me the best 28 years of my life. And I just want to tell you, thank you. Thank you, you hug. So recently I've, just, I, I've learned uh, a myth about a cardinal. Some of you may know it, some of you may not. It's just a myth. Uh, a cardinal is a messenger from God. If you see this cardinal up here in, in my backyard, um, this is in a tree in my backyard, and before Mandy's passing, my, my sister went outside every morning and told me this cardinal was out here and told me about this myth. Um, she noticed it um, out there tapping on my on my garage window um, and trying to get a message to us, um, trying to get my attention. You know, what's what's the better way to get a man's attention? Mess with his garage, right? You know, uh, there he, there he is there, right on the window ledge there, um, and. Uh, I watched this board bird for three mornings um, until Wednesday, even Wednesday morning, the 14th. On, on the morning of the 15th, the cardinal wasn't there, but it was snowing. Cody in the backyard, this I believe was Mandy letting, letting us know she was okay. Because Mandy has told, every, told us that she couldn't wait to sit in our Florida room drinking our morning coffee and watching snow fall in our backyard. So I just I just sat there and drank my morning cup of coffee with Mandy on the on the 15th. Whether you knew the cardinal story or not, it's just a myth. It don't matter, but every time you see a cardinal now, just think it's a messenger from God, from somebody. I would like you guys to enjoy this next video slash song with Mandy and myself and, and our family and our life together. Thank you.
King Solomon writes in the book of Ecclesiastes that there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Funerals are a, an opportunity for us to reflect on the life of the person that we've shared and valued and loved. And some fan funerals are very difficult to do, not knowing what to say of the person you've lost, but Mandy's is not so. Because of how she lived, because of how she loved, because of her faith. I began pastoring this church 25 years ago, in the fall of 1996. And in the first couple of months, a young couple walked through the doors and said, do you do weddings? I had not done weddings. But Jason and Mandy were my first. And Mandy often joked that she thought I was more nervous at her wedding than she was. <laughs> but I have had the opportunity and the privilege to walk through the, their family's life with them, seeing the birth of Dorian and Kirsten, ball games, broken bones, more broken bones, <laughs> graduations, grandchildren, and I watched Mandy's faith grow over the years, Jason too. When they joined a small group, Mandy was excited. Jason came along kicking and screaming. <laughs> but it's been true that in that process, in some ways they gained another family, a family of faith, a church family, in addition to their extended family, not to mention their sports families and all of you represented here today. It's so hard to capture the totality of a life when a life is made up of so many small things. Kyle and I met with the family on Sunday evening and they shared some of their stories, probably not always the most important, but it's those small things that make a difference. We've heard some stories today. Marilyn pointed out that Mandy was the most gullible person in the family, willing to believe and do anything you asked her. Mark reflected on Mandy's excitement growing up for vacation every year, going down to Florida. She loved to swim. Mark shared of his time teaching her. Lisa reflected on growing up with her as best friends. And uh, a story that caught me off guard was this story. They used to play a game called Lions and Tigers. And Mandy took it seriously and took a bite out of Lisa's back. <laughs> but they had their own sister tradition of shopping the day after Thanksgiving, year after year. And especially a few hard years Lisa went through, Mandy stuck by her side. And she appreciated that deeply. Devin shared stories about Mandy being the catalyst for him really moving back into relationship with Jason and being part of this family. She uh, made every effort to visit, even if Jason was unavailable. And when there were complications surrounding the birth of their son, that she took extra time and stayed with them to care and be present until things were settled. Dorian shared a story of going to the grocery store as a family around Halloween and he chose to wear a gorilla mask running up and down the aisle scaring people and Mandy was mortified. <laughs> Kirsten reflected on birthday dinners at Spaghetti Warehouse and um, every year and as she shared earlier today that while Mandy never had the opportunity to meet Miles in person. She was the very first FaceTime that they had. And Kirsten was amazed that Mandy could love someone so totally that she had not yet met. And then Jason, of course, shared a life with her, was amazed at her giftedness and her calmness, amazed at her ability to care for children, gravitating towards those with special needs, Kids that she cared for years ago have begun bringing Mandy her kids. 
their kids. Or she spent many days at the fields, but mostly she was Jason's partner in life, his second half. All of these stories bring about emotions. I'd like to just share a few scriptures today that give us direction, that give us some sense of the emotions that surface. Of course, funerals bring about a time of grief and sorrow. And Jesus himself modeled for us what it was to share in that grief. The book of John writes about the death of a friend named Lazarus. And just briefly, it says, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Oh, come and see, Lord, they replied. And as Jason noted earlier, the scripture simply says, Jesus wept. And then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And when we openly share our grief, it's a reflection of the love that we had for the person that we've lost. And Jesus modeled that for us. And I believe there's healing in that when we do that with each other. The Apostle Paul reminds us also in the New Testament to rejoice with those who rejoice and to mourn with those who mourn. And we do that with the McCleary family today. But oddly, there is also a sense of thanksgiving at funerals. The book of Psalms says that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And the scriptures reveal that God treasures the life of every believer. And while death signals the end of our service to him in this life, it is not the end of God's love or promises for us. And for those of us that remain, it is a reminder to ask ourselves, well, how am I spending my life? In the days that I have left, what will I be committed to? And we can be thankful for God's faithfulness, for his love, for his mercy and his hope. Because when we're not faithful, he remains faithful. And in those moments when we're not loving, God remains loving. His love is all-encompassing. His mercies never fail. In fact, he loves us so much that he has promised a future life with him to us. Which leads us to a third set of emotions at times of loss like this. And that's a time to trust. Psalms say, to find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in Him at all times. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge. And we can trust God to forgive our past, to care for us in the present, but also to give us a hope for the future. Paul writes to the Romans and to us, he says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation, our bodies, the world, everything, waits in eager expectation for the Son of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, and we have seen that over the past months as Mandy struggled with her health. As many of you have struggled with either COVID or other things that pre-existed. In hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay. And brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. It's important for us to understand the importance of this promise. That this life is temporary. And that while we experience highs and we experience lows compared to what will be. This is all short-lived. Which leads me to the final portion of Scripture. That there is a, a sense of inner hope bordering on joy as we think about the promises of God. Paul writes to us, and he would write to you as a family, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep, meaning those who die. Or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Because we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so, we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, we will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven 
with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And after that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, Paul says, encourage each other with these words. Faith was an important part of Mandy's life. She valued the promises of God. And while her faith, my faith, all of our faith is not perfect, we desire to grow. We desire to follow Jesus one step at a time because that's where we find hope. And so this is also a moment for us to reflect on our own faith journeys as we can talk about the value of Mandy's faith. To just do a self-assessment, to say, where's my relationship with God? I'm encouraged by Jason's own renewal of interest in growing spiritually. Because we know that God ultimately wins and overcomes, that the earth is broken as it is, as we struggle through all of the things we have in our culture over the last 12, 14, 18 months, as we face the unknown certainties of uh, pandemics and what the world has to offer, we know that in the end the world will be restored. When God finally turns to his son and says it's time to go, and he returns to the earth, all that is broken will be repaired. All that is lost will be returned. All the suffering will be ended, and death will be done away with. Which is why Paul writes these words. He says, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? But thanks be to God, he says, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. We look forward to that day when Christ returns with great anticipation. And the quality of our life hinges on the quality of our commitments and our priorities. What are you committed to? We know from our stories today what Mandy was committed to. And what are you working for? And more importantly, who are you trusting in? Because death is not the end. Christ will give life again. And those who accept Christ have a bright future and a certainty. And I think if there's any legacy that Mandy gives us that will live on. It's a legacy of faith as well. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we do thank you for the hope that you give us in the future. Lord, we are not in control of the things that surround us. We walk day by day with those who love us, trusting in your goodness, even when life falls apart. We mourn the, the loss of Mandy. Certainly at her age, there was so much left. We don't have the answers, but we do know that you have given us hope. And Lord, because of faith, we know that when your son returns, we'll live together with you. We pray that that day would come soon and that all of the loss we suffer now, all of the misfortune, all of the difficulties will seem insignificant with the glory that you reveal. Lord, in the meantime, I pray that you would give a sense of comfort to Mandy's family and friends, that you would give them a sense of your presence at their side, and Lord, that you would draw their hearts closer to you. We pray this all in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'm so incredibly grateful that I'm a member of the church family with the McClearys. You guys have meant so much to us in the time that I've gotten to know you. 
and Mandy exemplified grace in every way. So we're really grateful for the opportunity to honor her by singing Amazing Grace. Jay told us was a very important song to her. So thank you for that opportunity. And as we sing Amazing Grace, we hope that we honor Mandy, who is someone who showed grace in everything that she did and everything that she said. And her entire spirit, you could see it. You could see love and grace. service, there will be a meal shared here, and that you're invited to attend. So if you're not attending the graveside, I'm going to guess maybe about an hour and a half from when we leave the church, but you are invited. 